August 14th and 15th, 1947, the days India and Pakistan first became separate states, free from the British. The partition separated India into two countries, Muslim-majority Pakistan and Hindu-majority India. Under British rule for two centuries, one might think these would be celebratory dates, but they were the start of unforgiving violence and tension between two nations. The compromise that created Pakistan was meant to give India freedom and Muslims their own homeland. Instead, partition divided India mentally, physically, and politically. From compromise to chaos, a conflict of cultures results in the partition of India. British rule in India began in 1757. Looking for silk and spices to trade for their manufactured goods, the commander of British East India forces, Robert Clive, had his general, Mir Jafar, overthrow the current Nawab, or governor, so he could become the ruler of the state of Bengal. Many historians call this the beginning of the Raj, or British rule. In 1885, the focus for Indian nationalism shifted when 70 delegates met in Mumbai, each representing their British province. They formed a political party that they called the Indian National Congress. The Indians were promised freedom from the British if they fought in the world wars, but never achieved it, even though they fought well and sacrificed over three million of their people. The Government of India Act in 1935 separated India into 11 colonies, each governing themselves with little British interference. A mass movement against British rule in 1942 called Quit India was started by Mohandas Gandhi. They were protesting the Raj, trying to gain freedom. Little did they know how close it was. World War II left Great Britain in ruins, with the anxiety of rebuilding a nation and repaying the United States billions of dollars. Clearly, they did not need the responsibility of running another nation, so they appointed Louis Mountbatten as the last Viceroy of India. His job was to make a compromise, to get the British out as quickly as possible. In March of 1946, British Prime Minister Clement Attlee announced the transfer of power from Britain to India. The Muslims of British India feared living under Hindu majority, as Muslims were about 25% of the population. Similar to segregation in the United States, Muslims and Hindus did not drink from the same drinking fountains, and Hindus did not let Muslims into their households. Muslims were considered untouchables. Gandhi said, A stranger traveling in Indian trains may well have a painful shock when he hears at railway stations for the first time in his life ridiculous sounds about Pani, water, tea, and the like being either Hindu or Muslim. It would be repulsive. It is hoped that we shall soon have the last of the shame that is peculiarly Indian. Despite all of this, no one thought that India would be divided. There were two very important leaders during this time, with two very different ideas. Their names were Jawaharlal Nehru and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Nehru, who is the eventual Prime Minister of India and leader of the Indian National Congress, believed that a united, free India with strong central powers was the best. Jinnah, the eventual Prime Minister of Pakistan and leader of the Muslim League, wanted a divided India. He would also accept a united India, but with weak central powers. We want the division of India into Hindustan and Pakistan because that is the only practical solution. Mohandas Gandhi, the most famous leader, was not appointed to an official position because he was very angry towards partition. After partition, he was assassinated by a Hindu extremist who was angry because of Gandhi's tolerance towards Muslims. After the Prime Minister announced that India would receive independence, people started associating religion with nationality. Many of the Muslims of India agreed with Jinnah and the Muslim League and protested every day. There were many demonstrations, the major one being Direct Action Day, also known as the Calcutta Killings, on August 16, 1946. The demonstration was called by Jinnah to protest for Pakistan. The subsequent massacre left two to 4,000 people dead and 100,000 homeless. There are many more like this to come. During this horrible violence, women and girls were targeted directly because they were considered weaker and less important than men. They were killed in the most horrific ways, harassed, tortured, covered in oil, and then set on fire. Some fathers shot their own wives and children to make sure they died in the least painful way. The British knew about the riots but were ordered not to help. 
They wanted to leave India quickly and quietly to go rebuild their homeland. After the great Calcutta killings, hope for united India vanished quickly. By June 3, 1947, Great Britain announced that independence would be given to India by August of that year, giving politicians little choice but to agree to separate states. The British appointed Cyril Radcliffe, a man who had never been east of Paris to divide India, using old maps and censuses. He arrived on July 8th, a mere 36 days before independence. At this point, riots were happening daily and becoming more and more bloody. The once peaceful city of Lahore was breaking out into violence, so much so that the entire Hindu population was wiped out. Only a few families were left, and after the Hindu temples and homes were all burnt, virtually no Hindus were left. Cyril Radcliffe submitted his somewhat carefully drawn plan for the lines on August 7th, seven days before partition. On August 14, 1947, Louis Mountbatten swore in Muhammad Ali Jinnah as Prime Minister of Pakistan, and the line was released. There was great celebration as Mountbatten walked into the courthouse, but that was nothing compared to India, where on August 15, 1947, British and Indian police had to come and break up the celebrating crowd so Mountbatten could walk through. He then swore in Nehru as India's first Prime Minister. Not everyone saw this compromise as a cause for celebration. Gandhi, who had been fighting for freedom for years, refused to attend, saying, While this rejoicing, I see only blood. After everything was settled, Hindus who lived in newly created Pakistan gathered their belongings and traveled across the new border in huge human caravans. The men, women, children, and the elderly walked 15 to 20 miles a day. Diseases were everywhere, and families were forced to leave their babies and weakest members on the roadsides. Muslims who lived in India did the same in the other direction. Overpacked trains with thousands of people crossed the borders, and many didn't make it. Trains that normally took four or five hours took four or five days. They were very unprotected and prone to raids. Much too often, these blood trains arrived at their destination filled with dead bodies. Many caravans of men, women, and children of all ages were being attacked, and no one was spared. Here is one family's sad story about moving to India from Pakistan. One day, Sikh military comes with green lorry, mm -hmm. and they says, come on, everybody have to move from here. If you stay here, they will kill you. They put us in the lorry and take to the station. We stay in the train th three nights. Mm -hmm. No food, nothing. My sister was a very bad. She's she, very bad. My sister died over there. With millions of people streaming over the borders, many overcrowded refugee camps, some in sacred tombs, were created. They were filled with dirt and disease. Indian troops were too worried about their own families to help the refugees, and many of them were refugees themselves. In all, 15 million people attempted to cross the newly created border, but only 13 and a half to 14 million made it across alive. In addition to this conflict, Cyril Radcliffe left out one very important factor, Kashmir. Since that time, Kashmir has been the focus of two out of the three wars between India and Pakistan. Pakistan wants it because 60% of the population there is Muslim. India wants it because they unofficially claimed it right after partition and think that it is still theirs to own. Millions have died over and in Kashmir, and because of this, some parts of Kashmir are a horror to live in today. Nehru said this about the compromise. The picture of India that emerged frightened me. In fact, an entirely new picture presented. A picture of fragmentation and conflict and disorder, and unhappily also of a worsening of relations between India and Britain. During the Cold War, tensions increased. The United States allied with Pakistan and also tried to stop Soviet influence in India by giving supplies and military aid. This did not go over well with Pakistan, who broke the alliance. Tensions between India and Pakistan became even worse. Today, relations between India and Pakistan remain tense, and they are both nuclear armed. India has set off five nuclear explosions, and Pakistan six, bringing them to the attention of many countries. 
The partition of India in 1947 was one of the most significant times in the subcontinent's history, as it divided India and turned religions against each other. Before partition, India was very connected. After partition, India was and still is divided.